One of the most important goals of managing infectious diseases is to identify the correct microorganism and then match it to the correct drug. So selecting the right drug for the right bug. Antibiograms give us information that allows us to make the selection of the right drug with more confidence. In this video, I will break down all you need to know about antibiograms plus how to interpret them in a simple step-by-step -step way. In return, I just ask that you use literally one second to hit the like button. Thank you. By definition, Antibiograms provide a summary of antimicrobial or antibiotic susceptibility data for specific bacterial isolates. In other words, it tells us how well the antibiotic has worked against that specific bacteria at a specific institution for a specific time period. So for example, one year. Antibiograms are not generalized for every healthcare system, but instead, the data provided is for a specific healthcare system. So example, John Hopkins may have their own antibiogram, and so does Mount Sinai. Antibiograms are individualized to specific healthcare settings because antibiotic resistance and susceptibility patterns vary by location, patient population, and the healthcare practices. Antibiograms are essential for the following. First, antibiotic selection. So whether it's for empiric therapy or in cases when we know the bacteria causing the infection, the antibiogram helps us pick one antibiotic over the other. We may have three drugs in the hospital formulary that have activity against E. coli, but the antibiogram will give us the local susceptibility data to help guide that decision. Institutional treatment guidelines are developed using antibiograms for evidence-based protocols. Example, if fluoroquinolone susceptibility in E. coli decreases below 90%, guidelines may discourage ciprofloxacin use for UTIs in favor of nitrofurantoin or phosphomycin. Lastly, antibiograms are important for monitoring antibiotic resistance and trends. Here's an example of how an antibiogram looks. Let's take a look at some of the key components of this antibiogram. So first, the microorganism isolates are listed in the first column. In the hospital, samples collected from patients with suspected infections are sent to the microbiology laboratory for analysis and identification. The antibiogram may sometimes list the type of sample, so urine, blood, etc. Next is the antibiotic section. Now, once the lab in the hospital identifies the bacteria, they test multiple antibiotics against it. There are different ways to do this. One way for them to test the susceptibility of the antibiotics against the bacteria is using the disc diffusion method. In this method, First, they place the bacteria isolates all over an agar plate. An agar plate or petri dish is what it sounds like. It's literally like a plate that we put agar and other nutrients on top. Agar is a plant-based sugar mixed with other nutrients to create a medium that can promote bacteria growth. Next, antibiotic-infused discs are placed at different areas of the plate. So in this case, the agar plate usually contains one bacteria, so let's say E. coli. And for the antibiotic-infused discs, each one will have a different antibiotic. After, the agar plates are incubated, in other words, we store it at temperatures to promote growth of the bacteria. After incubation, clear areas around the antibiotic disc means bacteria didn't grow there, also known as the zone of inhibition. This area is measured and then the values are compared to the Clinical and Laboratory Standards Institute, CLSI, established guidelines to classify the bacteria as either susceptible, meaning the antibiotic is likely to be effective, Intermediate, meaning the antibiotic may work at higher doses or in specific body sites, or resistance, meaning the antibiotic is unlikely to be effective. The susceptibility data are compiled over and trends are analyzed to determine percentage susceptibility for each pathogen antibiotic 
combination. The percentage is based on the number of bacteria isolates tested. This number is crucial for accuracy, reliability, and clinical decision making. A high number of isolates provides more reliable and statistically significant susceptibility data. If too few isolates are tested, the percent susceptibility values may not accurately reflect true resistance patterns in the hospital or community. The Clinical and Laboratory Standard Institute recommends testing at least 30 isolates per pathogen to ensure meaningful antibiogram data. The interpretation is supposed to help guide the clinical decision making because a susceptibility of 80% may mean different things to different clinicians. So hospitals provide recommendations to make it easier. Okay, let's now test our knowledge with some practice questions. The questions are based on this antibiogram. So first, based on the antibiogram, which of the following antibiotic is the most appropriate for a patient with a UTI due to E. coli? So based on the antibiogram, there is no vancomycin and ceftazidime susceptibility data for E. coli, so we can eliminate those two. Between amoxicillin and gentamicin, the gentamicin has a higher percentage susceptibility with comparable number of isolates tested compared to the amoxicillin, making it more appropriate choice here. Next, why must clinicians check the local antibiogram even if vancomycin is known to be effective against MRSA? We can eliminate A because antibiograms provide local institution-specific resistance not global. We can also eliminate B and D. The correct answer here is C. MRSA resistance patterns vary by location. And finally, the institution is considering updating their guidelines for the treatment of Staphylococcus aureus infections. Which of the following antibiotics should not be included in the guidelines? Now, based on the antibiogram, penicillin has the lowest susceptibility percentage meaning there is a higher chance of a resistance. So the correct answer here is A. And that will be the end of this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned at least one thing. And now you understand how to interpret an antibiogram. Please hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching this video and take care.